Today's deck build will focus on Mecha Phantom Beasts. Mecha Phantom Beasts have always been one of my favorite decks, for it has a unique deck mechanic, the presence of tokens preventing destruction, with high versatility XZ ability, and the, has the potential to compete with any deck with the right build. However, for whatever reason, people have not been able to produce a successful Mecha Phantom Beast deck outside of the Blue Moon deck that has been stuffed with so many floodgates. It makes the Mecha Phantom Beast aspect of the deck an afterthought, instead creating some worky stun deck, and even those decks tend not to be very successful without a lot of luck. If Mecha Phantom Beasts are as good as I think they are, why do they not achieve success? In my opinion, Mecha Phantom Beasts need to design with the specific methodology to win, and stuffing them with generic floodgates doesn't meet that methodology. In my opinion, Mecha Phantom Beasts deserve better than to be simply treated and thought of as some run-of-the-mill second-tier deck, only receiving real attention when they are horribly mutated with various generic anti-meta cards. First thing first, when designing the deck, selecting the right monsters is essential because, as with most archetypes, there are good monsters and there are, let's just say, not so good monsters. For example, Calgryphon is supposed to be the big non-XZ boss monster, and it's just flat out bad. Both the summoning condition and the effect are poorly designed. First, the special summon aspect of this card is pigeonholed to the point where it's only meaningful in a single scenario, typically making this card a net loss a vast majority of the time. The effect is bad because Mecha Phantom Beasts do not have any real benefit from having monsters in the graveyard like a number of other decks. They don't mind having monsters in the graveyard, but for a single token, it's certainly not worth the discard. Just off the top of my head, I think this would have been a much better effect for a card that was supposed to be of the caliber of Cal Griffin. You can return two Mecha Phantom Beasts from your side of the field to your hand to special summon this card. You can only special summon one Cal Griffin this way per turn. When this card is special summoned, and once during each turn after this card is special summoned, you can return up to two Mecha Phantom Beasts from your graveyard to your deck to special summon one Mecha Phantom Beast token per returned card. While you control a token, this card cannot be destroyed. Once per turn, you can select one of the following effects. Tribute one token to inflict 800 damage to your opponent's life points. Tribute two tokens to draw one card. Tribute three tokens to destroy all monsters on your opponent's side of the field. Unfortunately, that is not Cal Griffin's effect. So with its current effect, it's basically worthless outside being synchro material, and it's not nearly reliable enough for that. Moving on, we look at Saberhawk, which is the biggest level 4 gun in the Mecha Phantom Beast archetype. It has a somewhat useful graveyard banish effect, but it's ruined in my mind because it can't attack directly. And unless run in a pure Mecha Phantom Beast deck, it typically won't be able to attack at all. Also, the Graveyard Banish effect, while it has its use here and there, there are better things to do with your tokens. Mega Raptor. Definitely, yes. It's a good 1900 attack, it has a great token effect, and has a very useful secondary tokening summoning effect. Any respectable Mecha Phantom Beast deck should run three. Harleyard is an interesting card. It's a good solid option that recycles tokens, basically making token effects free with the fringe benefit of level upgrading, because there will be times when you'll exchange a non-Mecha Phantom Beast token for a Mecha Phantom Beast token and get that three level boost. The secondary special summoning effect can be useful for swarming due to the limited concerns of overextending because of the anti-destruction effects of Mecha Phantom Beast. However, it really won't be used very often. This guy does work very well with Mega Raptors, doubling tokens effect. For example, a common play is attributing a token for Mega Raptors effect, search a card, summon a token with Harley Ard, then summon another token with Mega Raptors effect. So by tributing a single token, you can search for one Mecha Phantom Beast monster, increase your token count by one, or you can special summon the search monster and break even with tokens. Despite all of those glowing things I just said about Harleyard, I don't run it. 
because outside of that combination with Mega Raptor, it's really not very useful. Basically, in my opinion, Hurliard is the fourth best level four Phantom Beast, but I don't have a, any deck space to run some. I would if I had more deck space, but I don't. Tetherwolf. Definitely yes. A nice 1700 attack that can be bumped up to 2500 with its own effect on the turn that it's summoned or any other turn when a token's available. This card works nicely in combination with Mega Raptor as well, producing excess tokens. Like Mega Raptor, any respectable Mega Fan of Beast deck should run three. Coltwing. A nice card with a pair of useful effects. Two tokens on a special summon is nice, but you need another Mecha Fan of Beast to achieve it, which fortunately is not very hard with all the with various special summoning cards, and also isn't difficult because you have O Lion, and also not difficult because, again, with Mecha Fan of Beasts, you can't destroy me if a token exists on my field. It's a little tougher for your opponent just to hack away at the Mecha Fan of Beasts. The token, their token effect is nice, but it can be limited in its usefulness because you have to give up two tokens for a destruction effect that later banishes. If the effect banished straight away, which I think it should have for two tokens, rather than destroyed, then it would have been much more useful, but that's just a small quibble. Overall, for my build, Coltwing and Harleyard kind of compete for deck space, and based on my build strategy, Coltwing is more useful, so two copies. Black Falcon is a strange card, because on its face it kind of appears useful, but overall that usefulness turns out to be limited. The effect is a quality one, typically involving basically the payment of 600 to 1200 life points in the form of battle damage to summon a token. Unfortunately, the problem with this card is twofold. First, its token tribute effect is garbage. If it negated effects as well as switched the position, then it'd be a huge winner. But it doesn't, so big deal. Second, its attack power is so low that it rarely kills anything. Thus, it almost forces you to play kind of quasi-defensively, and it can become a liability. Because in my opinion, you don't want to play defensively with Mecha Fan of Beasts. Eros Erosigan is kind of an emergency card more than anything, but the problem with it is it has no token effect. At 1600 attack, it can trade or get over some of the more commonly run cards, unlike Black Falcon. And while removing from play is not a great option for Mecha Fan of Beasts, the ability to produce a token once per turn with very little situation circumstance can produce quality combination potential, but the problem I have with this card is it's almost too much of a front runner card. Because without its token effect, it needs a partner to do something, and this card really isn't going to bring you back from behind very much. The first tuner for Mecha Phantom Beast, Blue Impala, I feel is the worst of the three. While you can use stuff from the hand, the token summons, and this token summons is somewhat useful, the card itself is just bad, and the machine limitation really kills its viability as a tuner. Moving on, Hamstrat, I run three copies, I feel it's the most important level three hands down. There are definitely will be times when Hamstrat will give its life for the tokens if no tokens exist on the field when it's flipped face up as a result of battle, because the summon tokens can't protect him from destruction. However, an effect that is, generates two tokens in a Mecha Phantom Beast deck is still strong no matter what the situation. The secondary token effect is incredibly useful because special summoning from the graveyard can be the first step to producing significant momentum changing combinations in Mecha Phantom Beast decks. Turtle Racer is a pure stall card, which commonly acts as a double edged sword. Turtle Racer does not have the attack power to destroy much, nor can it produce tokens through any method on its own. Certainly, you have the Mecha Phantom Beast builds that can run a lot of alternative mass removal like needle sealing and it can make use of this card by getting opponents to overextend because they're going to have to hack through those tokens. However, this is not a strategy I prefer. In my opinion, any real stall aspect to Mecha Phantom Beast needs to kind of come naturally over the course of the game. Turtle Racer is kind of a pure stall card that hurts deck flow. Overall, I think there are better choices. Stealth Ray, at 100 attack, it 
The only token summoning this card is going to do is when it's attacked while face down. Its tribute effect is of limited importance because Mecha Phantom Beasts are typically protected from destruction, so back row is much less concerning. If you need to destroy a Skill Drain or Vandy's Emptiness or a Pendulum, just run an MST over this card. It's not worth giving up the token. Even worse, this card is similar to Turtle Racer and Black Falcon. Because of its low attack power, it kind of focuses more on defense and stalling than attacking. Overall, i just say no to Stealth Ray. However, i just say yes to O-Lion. You know the line by now? Any respectable Mecha fan of Beast deck should run 3. O-Lion's not really suited for the field unless being immediately used for a Synchro Summon. Rather, its real power comes when it hits the graveyard. You get that free token, plus you get the ability to facilitate a second normal summon. And like I said with Colt, back when I said with a Hamstrap, that second summons, getting that little bit of swarming potential without having to give up anything, it can be the first step in producing some big combinations. That's kind of what separates it from Harleyard. Is Liard, you have to give up that token. O-Lion, you don't. Also, hey, it's a tuner. It's always nice to have a tuner to fall back on, because unlike Impala, you don't have some silly machine-only restriction. Uh, Wolbaran is the third tuner. It's better than Impala, in my opinion, but it's far inferior to O-Lion, so there's no real reason to run it. Moving on to the Synchros. Jakruslan is the newest Synchro. It has a kind of a mini backbreaking effect. The problem is the effect is rarely backbreaking because of the level augmenting aspect of Mecha Phantom Beast Monsters. While the level augmentation effect makes high value XZ summoning much easier, it also makes using this effect to its full potential impossible, unless you're running Cal Griffin. It's very possible to turn a Cal Griffin and an O-Lion into this card and have two or three tokens ready for its effect. Unfortunately, any usefulness to this combination is completely wiped out by how pathetic Cal Griffin is outside of the use of Synchro material. The major problem with Concordia is I feel it's a big time frontrunner card. It has no real meaningful effect when on the field because I don't think protecting tokens is a valuable asset. And you have to give up multiple monsters to summon it in the first place, significantly reducing your attacking momentum. Its secondary special summon ability is alright, but it's not worth the summons and extra deck space for Mega Fan of Beasts is far too valuable to waste it on this. Moving on to the XZs, Draco Sack, big boss monster, definitely run two, and obviously, not surprisingly, Draco's overall utility is increased further in its actual home deck than when it's playing, when it's splashed in an away deck. Moving on to the archetype spells, first, Vertical Landing. This card is just bad, unless you decide to use a card like Reborn Tengu, this card is almost always going to produce a minus both in advantage and in versatility because rarely are you going to have the right combination of Mecha Phantom Beast to make proper use of this card. One can attempt to combo this card with the next card I'm going to talk about but that summoning strategy is rather convoluted and inefficient. One might as well just use Summoner Monk instead. Most of the time this card might as well be a dead draw. Scramble Scramble can be useful if you choose to run Colt Wing, otherwise its utility falls significantly because despite the versatility of being able to summon from the deck, Colt Ring is really the only card that you want to say, oh, I'm willing to give up tokens to get that from my deck because you're not going to have a lot of tokens on the field for anything else. The best time to use this card is after Hamstrat's flipped, typically destroyed by battle, flip this over, put a Colt Wing on the field, maybe put another Mega Raptor on the field, boom, suddenly your opponent's gone from, oh, I just destroyed a Hamstrat, to, oh, dang, look what I'm looking down the barrel of. If it weren't for space considerations, I would run this card, but unfortunately, I don't have the room. But it's still a pretty good card in the right situation. Aerial Recharge is kind of the quote-unquote controversial card, I guess, of the archetype. Uh, it's a tricky one, because it can actually be beneficial in the right situations. The real strength of this card is, obviously, here it is again, pairing it with Mega Raptor, which will produce an inherent two-for-one. 
typically the worst result from this card is hey you get a free mecha fan of beast token that <clears throat> you can use to protect your monsters or use for a card effect and then you'll just let aerial recharge be destroyed at the end phase however the problem with this card is that while it helps protect your monsters that protection is most meaningful against the more limited less common field clearing destruction making its uh, combination against that field destruction a little less viable also it tends not to directly help you destroy your opponent's monsters unless you activate during your turn which is more on the rare side basically running this card tends to take up space that can be better used by other cards that can destroy or remove your opponent's monsters running this card means accepting that trade-off at least that would be the debate if this card didn't demand a token tribute at each end phase not just the controllers end phase the two token tribute per full turn really hurts the utility of this card now there is the strategy of trying to get around this problem by running magic planner yeah you, know, you could throw in some fiendish chains to support the planter utility because then you flip it over get your token then use planner gone but remember that combination only works when you use recharge on your turn not your opponent's turn and overall I just don't like that strategy it's viable but I just don't view it as something that can be consistently depended upon and Mecha Phantom Beasts need that consistency Sonic Boom oh boy this card is just sad the good of its effect is far too situational to be useful and the bad of its effect basically kills it even if the good effect were even meaningful in some contexts this reminds me of those call of the haunted kind of knockoffs that were created when call of the haunted was banned except this card is basically just a poor excuse for limiter removal finally do a barrel roll this card is frequently too expensive in my opinion to activate as you're usually going to give up multiple tokens and that's rarely beneficial due to the inherent destruction protection effect of those tokens and what your core mecha fan of beast monsters can do through tributing those tokens therefore there are a number of times and do a barrel roll is just going to be a dead draw in my opinion running something like dark bribe or Trap Tricks Trap Hole Nightmare is overwhelmingly superior to running this card if you want to use negation in your deck. Well, that puts a wrap on the direct Mecha Phantom Beast support, so now what? Well, most of the monsters are taken care of, but there are a couple more to go. In my opinion, any deck that has a large machine presence needs to run one of the best effect monsters in the game, Machine of Fortress. In Mecha Phantom Beast deck, Fortress provides a significant muscle at 2500 attack points, works with Mecha Phantom Beast level 4s to make very easy rank 7 XE plays, Mecha Phantom Beast plus Tether Wolf equals happy times, and it also functions as a beautiful discard engine for O-Lion, because remember, we don't really want to put O-Lion on the field, but we do want to put it in the graveyard. Hmm, Machina Fortress Mech plus O-Lion equals special summon of a 2500 attack point monster, get a free token, plus now we have two normal summons to take care of. Hmm, that sounds like a kind of a nice little OTK combination in the right circumstances. Finally, Machina Fortress, as it's always been said, is just a pain in the butt to get off the field, forcing your opponent to use up those spell and trap cards that might be involved, largely involved with mass removal or can, can kind of slide step past your token protection. Closing out the monsters, I like to tech one copy of Phantom of Chaos as kind of a toolbox monster of sort. Phantom of Chaos can effectively copy Mega Raptor, Coltwing, Hamstrat, Tether Wolf to a lesser extent if you need that attack power, or Draco Sack's destruction effect when tributing tokens, providing useful utility when drawn in the mid-game. Other than Phantom of Chaos, another potentially interesting tech card in Mecha Phantom Beast is the Calculator. It is certainly not rare in Mecha Phantom Beast to have at least 10 levels worth of monsters on the field, if not more. Add calculators to, and you'll have at least a 3600 attack point monster. However, in my experience, I do tend to prefer the effect utility of Phantom of Chaos over the raw attack power that the calculator can provide. 
That sums up the monsters in the deck, so now what about the spells? First, the staples. One Regeki, one Book of Moon, one Soul Charge, two Dark Holes due to the great protection effects of Mecha Fan of Beast tokens, and then the staple, of course, in all machine decks, one limiter removal. The next step demands recalling that both the protection and token effects of Mecha Phantom Beast extend to any tokens on the field, not just Mecha Phantom Beast token. Therefore, this deck needs some cards that generate tokens. Scapegoat is the obvious initial consideration, but in my experience, it's not a good one. The problem with Scapegoat is that it clogs the field, reducing the ability to put multiple Mecha Phantom Beasts on the field. Thus, you need to hope your opponent destroys a few in a manner that helps your attack flow, rather than the other way around. Smart players, when they know you're running Mecha Phantom Beast, they're not going to help you out. They're going to make it hard on you. And the problem Mecha Phantom Beasts have that we'll go back to in the future here is they're not advantage machines. So your opponent... I'm... I'll, I've fine with waiting a little. I'm going to build up my hand, get my advantage, you sit there and continue to draw one card, then I'll rush you and crush you. Hippo Carnival is a non-starter because the tokens can't be tributed, thus it severely handicaps the power of the monsters in this deck. If you can't tribute tokens to get Mecha Phantom Beast effects, well, you might as well just quit, because you're going to lose. Stray Lambs is not a quick play, and it's too restrictive on future summons. Sometimes I just wonder why was Stray Lambs created in the first place. Therefore, the choice really comes down to three cards. First, Fires of Doomsday is a quick play, two tokens, that can be activated during your opponent's turn to protect, especially from targeting effects. The advantage is that quick play aspect. The disadvantage is it only nets two tokens, and it has that summons restriction. Second, Void Expansion which only produces one token during your standby phase, but will produce one token until it's removed from the field. The advantage is that you will have that token on the start of your turn. The disadvantage is it's slow. Third, and the card that I run three copies of, is Black Garden. Yeah, Black Garden is one of the most annoying cards in the game, but it basically combines the benefits of Pyres of Doomsday and Void Expansion, as its summons trigger is akin to Fire's Quick Play aspect, and its continuous effect is akin to Expansion effect. So you're going to frequently get tokens during your opponent's turn, and you're going to get them in a continuous fashion. Combining these effects helps mitigate, as mentioned, the biggest drawback in running Mecha Phantom Beast, the lack of simple advantage production. Mecha Phantom Beast can produce advantage, but to do so they typically need two Mecha Phantom Beasts and one token, a situation that obviously does not con occur consistently, whereas most of the top decks have cards that produce advantage by themselves. Black Garden is one of the best support cards in the game for Mecha Phantom Beast to neutralize this disadvantage. Initially, running Black Garden may fly in the face of my chief criticism against Scapegoat for it definitely can clog your field, limiting your offensive options. So what makes Garden different? A few important points. First, you can tribute its tokens for normal summons, so you can still play Machina Fortress if desired. Second, and most importantly, the attack point reduction associated with Black Garden significantly limits the detriment of token clogging because your opponent's attacking capacity is heavily handicapped for OTK purposes, and in the worst case scenario, you can just suicide one or two of your tokens during your battle phase and make your plays during your main phase too, at a much lower life point cost than suiciding scapegoat tokens into fully powered opponent monsters. However, some people do have strong feelings against Black Garden, and if you fall into that category, while in my opinion you're reducing the probability of victory, I can understand it. Then, instead of Black Garden, I'd run two copies of Fire of Doomsday and one copy of Scramble Scramble, or one copy of Fires of Doomsday and two copies of Scramble Scramble, whatever your preference. The final spells are based around all of the free monsters that we're going to be producing in this deck, especially with Black Garden. Creature Swap and Supply Squad. The value of Creature Swap is self-explanatory. Trade a token for a much more powerful monster from your opponent, 
smash into them. The obvious value of Supply Squad is the draw power of the deck. It fascinates me why people do not run Supply Squad in this deck. If there was almost ever a deck that said, run Supply Squad, it's Mecha Phantom Beast, or I guess your generic token deck. Some people, for some reason, run Draw Muscle instead of Supply Squad. I don't understand that. Supply Squad is a far superior card to Draw Muscle. Draw Muscle, I, nice, I guess. It's, hey, I'm Upstart Goblin, and I protect one of your tokens from battle destruction, typically, but run Supply Squad. Much superior. For the traps, I run what I feel are the five general staples. One Torrential, one Bottomless, one Solemn Warning, one Compulse, one Ring of Destruction, and I close out my main deck by running three Call of the Haunteds in order to increase flexibility in summoning the right Mecha Phantom Beast for the situation, especially Colt Wing, or heck, bring back another Machina Fortress to smash through some stuff. For my extra deck, besides the two Draco Sacks, I run one Star Eater, you're out to Towers, one Goyo Guardian, one Armades, one Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon, I would run Dora instead, but it's not out in the TCG, so... One Phantom Fortress, Enter Blathnir. One Number 11 Big Eye. One Photon Strike Bouncer. I run the four Rank 4 Staples. One Exiton, one Number 101, one Castell, one XYZ Dragon. I run one Lightning Chidori. And I run one number 103 Ragna Zero, which works very well with Black Garden's attack reduction effect, which can net you some valuable cards. I go back and forth sometimes between Lightning Chidori and Castell, because Chidori I think is a better card, but because I have Phantom of Chaos in the deck, sometimes after using getting Phantom of Chaos to copy something, I might want to go into a Castell to bounce something afterwards. I think Castell just adds that extra bit of versatility with Phantom of Chaos over the superior Lightning Chidori effect. As I said, you, know, you can see the cramped space for the extra deck in Mecha Phantom Beasts because I don't have an Anti-Luminescent Knight and I don't have a Gaga -ga -ga Cowboy. For some reason, some people try to make Mecha Phantom Beasts a Synchro deck, which I don't really understand because it's not a very good Synchro deck because it only ha typically only has the one tuner, three copies, but O Lion's the only tuner, and you have those level level augmenting effects, so it takes a lot of skill and tactics to even produce good synchros from time to time. Realistically, if you want to run a synchro deck, just go put a synchron deck together because it's designed for synchro. Mecha Phantom Beast decks really aren't designed for synchro. Overall, I think one of the things that turns a lot of people off about Mecha Phantom Beast is the fact that the deck does take a significant level of strategy to run successfully. For example, it takes some level of experience with the deck to know when to use a certain Mecha Phantom Beast token tribute effect and when not to use it and rely on that token for its protection. Overall, I think Mecha Phantom Beasts are a lot better than most people give them credit for, and they're not just some fun, low-level Tier 2 or Tier 3 deck. I just think it takes the right build to make them look good. I think the problem with those anti-meta builds are they flow away from the strengths of Mecha Phantom Beasts. Is, because Mecha Phantom Beasts, they're not a stun deck. But by adding all those anti-meta cards, you're basically trying to make them a stun deck. They're not a stun deck, so I think that hurts their viability when you're you're playing, I'm going to stop what you do, rather than, I'm just going to do what I do, you try to stop me. Well, that's my Mecha Phantom Beast deck. Thank you for your attention and your time. I'm out.